Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody, Militia Man and Crew here. I hope everybody's doing a wonderful day. Um, today's been one of those busy, busy uh, work days for most everybody, but hey, here we go. Um, there's an article out that's called uh, Investing Iraq's Natural Wealth is a step towards economic integration. I like the word integration because I think the WTO uses that quite frequently as does World Bank and others. <laughs> so, But they use it and whether it means anything or not is to be determined. But uh, So yesterday uh, they come out with experts in the financial and economic affairs. What are they calling for? They're calling about uh, investing the enormous natural resources that Iraq possesses scientifically and systematically and correctly. And what they're saying is it will con contribute to removing the country from the spiral of the one-way rent, which is one-way rent is oil only. And if you guys remember back when uh, the Saddam Hussein era was concerned, um, oil was about 35 bucks a barrel. Uh, today it's somewhere over 80. And uh, they were at $3.22 back then. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not giving a rate or a date or anything like that, but I just it, perspective is important. Um, they go on to say that that it's a one-way rent. So what, and what have we been talking about? Well, they've been wanting to move towards um, non-oil um, assets, and we know that because of the Ascada system they put it into place. Uh, that's going to be taxes and tariffs, customs at the borders. Uh, we know that they have uh, a massive amount of natural resources, and we're going to go over that. Uh, so Mohammed Saleh, <clears throat> yesterday, he's, he's an advisor to the Prime Minister uh, al Sudani. He's basically stating that the global economic community estimates as a stock capital at a prevailing price for today, Iraq's worth about 16 to 17 trillion U.S. dollars. Okay. And that sounds like a number, it's 16 to 17 trillion, big deal. Well, I think you, if you understand what one trillion actually equates to, you'll get the picture, it's, it's a lot. <clears throat> the interesting thing is gonna to be too, is that pay, pay attention to this part, is that Iraq is gonna be doing, um, potentially getting both sides of the equation. Uh, instead of having people come in and mine it, take it away and, and produce it and sell it, Iraq's going to mine it, produce it, and sell it. So they're going to get both sides of the equation. And what that does is that, that raises the income stream for Iraq. And we have some really bright people in Patreon, and we have some really bright people in our forum, and, um, and I also Discord, our Discord Militiaman chat room, um, that have experience and know that um, the accounting side of things um, Iraq is really uh, in a position to be able to support uh, more than they had during that era, of that previous era. So when they say they're going to go back to a previous era, it's not a bad era because it, the price is, is nice, especially for investors at this stage of the game. So, But keep that in mind too because they have the natural resources. It says uh, the report's of the geological survey, which is renowned globally, uh, those survey experts in Iraq confirm that the country has the first reserves in the world of, sur of sulfur, sorry. Um, they have the largest deposit on the planet in sulfur. <laughs> All right. The second reserve, okay, to Morocco, which is in phosphate. So just those two items besides oil are, are massive because of, of what they have in the ground. And so keep that in mind when, you're, when you start thinking about uh, when people tell you that they're going to lop their currency. And then remember that they have uh, decreased their inflation from 7% to 4%. So when those people that suggest that they're going to lop the currency, um, ask them about that. How is it that a country that's worth 16 to 17 trillion with no inflation going to lop their currency? And that would be allowed by the IMF, the Bank of International Settlements, and uh, the WTO, 
effectively because they're going to be part of that in the future. Uh, the United States Treasury, for instance, why would they be able to just erase the value of the currencies when the U.S. Treasury holds, let's say, seven, nine, ten trillion dinar? You got to ask them that question. You don't need to answer the questions because these, this is what's in the news. This is what's reality. Um, and some of the brightest minds, I think, in the world um, that happen to be investors in the Iraqi dinar support what I'm talking about. And we can see uh, that, that there's been like two drafts in the economic reform law and the natural resources investment law, which constitutes Iraq's next strategy to generate the investment partnership with the private sector. So if you think about it for a second, that right there is that why in the world would anybody want to invest into Iraq if they were going to put their money into Iraq and then they were going to lose. Because if you invest your money in Iraq and they lop their currency, you're not going to make any money. There's no value in it. It's a neutral event. So anyway, moving on. According to the, uh, the wide production chains that go beyond the extraction, which I talked about, uh, mining and export, okay, they say that the extraction outputs go to the manufacture of raw materials themselves as inputs. So they're going to, like I said, they're going to get both, both sides of the coin. Which are chains that will undoubtedly generate added value and predominant value to them, right? Okay, so in, a, in essence, what I'll read to you is again, is that the article basically states that Soleil, okay, the guy's renowned, <clears throat> he says, with the exception of the investment currently underway in oil and gas wealth, the Iraqi economy has the opportunity to exploit those minerals and other natural resources. He's noting that the two draft economic reform law, natural resources investment law, constitutes Iraq's next strategy to generate the investment partnerships with the private sector according to a wide production chain, chain that goes beyond the extraction and the export paragraphs so that the extraction outputs go to the manufacture of raw materials themselves as inputs, which are change that will undoubtedly generate added value and predominant value. <clears throat> and in, they're, in, they're in the process of, of working this out. They have the legislative executive portions sorted and those laws are done. So we don't, we're not waiting for that anymore. We didn't have that in the past. So now's the time that we're going to see some, some differences. And so they go on to say that <clears throat> their policies and investments, um, development require patterns of investments, rates of production, annual national income, which is going to be the basis of which is certainly the investment and productivity partnership with the state and the private sector. So the private sector and the um, state have partnerships, and that's going to create the value. Look, the specialized interna international economic website, St um, Statista, publishes a report on natural resources owned by countries of the world. Iraq comes in ninth globally. It says that ha they have about 15.9 trillion in natural resources, 16, 17, okay, whatever it is, 15, 16. Bottom line is they, get, they have a lot of in-ground wealth. He says, Iraq has a lot of important natural resources, expensive min minerals, materials, such as sulfur and mercury, addition to the gas that they have, coal and others. And when I say gas, remember, we're going to talk about a few other things that we've been mentioning. And when it comes to the United States having um, their uh, foothold in Iraq, it's going to be big. <laughs> and they're not going anywhere. So... He goes on to say that uh, Iraq um, has left that Dutch budge, if you will. Uh, that's a whole different uh, sidebar. But the fact is, is that it is a uh, the Dutch syndrome is actually a thing in economics. And if you guys want to look it up, you should. Um, it says, in addition to the possibility of achieving a significant increase in its financial incomes, that would raise the purchasing power of the Iraqi individual. To me, that's massive because that's what they're telling us. They're talking about raising the purchasing power 
of the Iraqi dinar. Well, how do you raise the purchasing power of the Iraqi dinar without um, changing the exchange rate? Obviously, the answer to that question is, I think you all know it, they can't. Um, they go on to say that uh, uh, since 2023, they've had devices, equipment capable of extracting those wealth buried in the ground, but they couldn't contract with major international companies specialized in this regard to order to achieve a qualitative leap in the economic and event, even industrial fields. But yet with this mass measure, it has moved away from even partially from relying on oil rents. So in other words, weird translation, but what they're saying is, is that now is the time that they can move away from just the oil because they have all these assets. They have all of these assets, which is gonna be a phenomenal situation. Look, they're going to work to the manufacturer of product, products themselves. They're going to do this on their own. So they're going to export that. It's going to expand their wealth even further. Uh, they will be doing exactly what they said they were going to be doing and bring purchasing power to their citizens by extension to investors of the Iraqi dinar. That's going to be us. That's how I see it. The dinar will be stronger than the dollar, just as Al Sudani has stated numerous times. Uh, more than once, he has stated that, hey, hold your dinar. And so, there again, why did he say all that? Because he knew all this stuff. The man's been on a tear since he got into office back in October of 2022. The legislative and executive authority is in place. We, we're going to see proof of that. And they've already mentioned it. The legislative um, body has ruled on that investment law, Okay. Etc. So keep in mind, it's 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 uh, it's similar to what um, we saw with the Ascada system. It's irreversible. They can't do anything about it. The, the bottom line is they're going to go di they're going to go digital, and they're going to be able to track and, and monitor all their stuff. And the basic point is is that they're going to have a massive revenue stream from many different directions. That's not just reliant on oil, as I just pointed out. And what is it going to do? It's going to give support for the citizens, the purchasing power. There's going to be another person that's going to come out on the, onto the stage um, in this tonight, and that is going to be um, on the same on the same measure we just mentioned. Um, on a different bar, Al Hakim calls for Saudi Arabia to have a role in the urban renaissance in Iraq. Well, why is there going to be an urban renaissance in Iraq if it's just going to be status quo and at thirteen ten? Uh, exchange rate. Why would that be? It wouldn't. Um, they're basically calling for Saudi Arabia to have a role in the urban renaissance in Iraq. What is a renaissance? It, a renaissance is a rebuild, bringing new, old to new. And uh, that's what they're doing. It says, during the visit of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we met with the crown prince of the sisterly Kingdom of Arabia, his high prince Mohammed bin Salman, and we exchange views on developments in the political scene in Iraq and the region and ways to strengthen relations between the two countries. So they go on to say, Iraq's stability has had a positive impact on the security and safety of the region. And we called for investing in their promising opportunities offered by Iraq in the field of reconstruction and development. A couple of key words, reconstruction and development, and for the kingdom to have a role in the urban renaissance that Iraq is witnessing. Okay, what do I get from it? The positivity of having security and stability now is paving the way for the urban renaissance. Saudi Arabia is going to be investing in the promising opportunities Iraq has in the fields of reconstruction and development. The timing couldn't be any better, as you can see it. They, they helped with all that work for the WTO, which is effectively kind of quiet on certain things. Well, so maybe that's the way they do things. Like I said in the past, some, some things are better left unsaid because it can cause shocks to markets. And who talked about shocks to market? The World Bank did. And we, we, we've talked about that in our videos. So if you guys are seeing how you know, kind of exciting this is, uh, what they're talking about, the valuation of this country is massive. The, the whole picture we're going to paint is, is a theory and the theme, more of a theme as opposed to a theory, of Iraq can support a previous era exchange rate, probably quite easily, and then some.
So anyway, it says this, this article is the secret of the dollar's decline in the parallel market lost its customers and demand for the platform increased fourfold. Okay, so that's really pretty interesting. So in other words, the black market, the illegal market has waned significantly by about four times. That's what the article says specifically. The parallel market lost its customers. Okay, you can find all these in Patreon. Uh, you can go out in there and try to Google all your stuff, but hey, keep in mind, Super Samson has been dynamo, unbelievable, brings in news on a regular basis, works hard, uh, probably eight to 10 hours a day. She shouldn't have to do that, but she does. Um, and she's really good at it. And that's what brings us all this information. And I'm able to bring it to you. And so keep that in mind. Uh, the deputy governor of the Central Bank of Iraq confirms that the external commercial transfers through the official SWIFT system have increased significantly and jumped from 50 million per day to 200 million now. Uh, they go on to say that the central bank's electronic platform, which ensures compliance with the SWIFT system, has, has witnessed a, a significant increase in many foreign trade transactions are now conducted through the platform. Uh, it says at the beginning of 2023, tr transactions amounted to 50 million per day, uh, and now we have about 200 million, which is proportional to the size of the Iraqi economy. That is just massive. So basically, they have isolated the system to the point where the parallel market is going to be ineffective. Uh, we noticed that the cases of rejections by the U.S. Federal Reserve or on remittances have decreased recently because banks in Iraq have realized that the international requirements and because merchants know better what is required to transfer their money. So everybody's finally getting on board and ultimately the parallel market is going to cease to exist as we know it. They go on to say that we're, to, we're in constant contact with the U.S. Treasury to try to lift the ban on some banks, hoping that the talks would yield good and positive results. I think you're going to find uh, here tonight that um, they're not talking about that, and probably rightfully so. Perhaps uh, this matter reveals the real secret of the decline in the exchange rate of the uh, dollar against the dinar, is as there is only a small part remaining. So in other words, it's depreciated down and it says it's it's somewhere perhaps equivalent to $25 million per day. So that's completely different than in the past. That buys a dollar from the parallel market while the rest of the types of foreign trade have begun to take place through the central bank and in a fundamental manner, according to the announced numbers. Um, basically what I, have to, what I have from this is that there's more support that this system that they are using is now in our favor as investors. We know that inflation is at 4%. I talked about that in the get go. Um, and the reserves now um, in Iraq are 100 billion, 111 billion, significantly more than they need. I think it turns out to be about 16 months worth of import money. Uh, they go on to say that external transfers jumped 300% within a year and have gone from the $50, uh, 50 million to 200 million through that SWIFT system uh, within the first three months of this year. Within the first three months, that's how much they went from 50 million to 300 million. Basically, as a result of that, what we're talking about, in my view, uh, it's showing to be the death of the parallel market. Um, basically, what happens is if they uh, expose a real effective exchange rate and they do what Al Sudani said they were going to do, um, they're going to have a uh, situation where there's probably going to be some people out there that are going to get um, creamed in the marketplace because they, they bring the value of the dinar more than the dollar, like he said he was going to happen effectively. Uh, there's no need for that market anymore. So anyway, um, the snippet here it says uh, that I have, in addition to the possibility of achieve, achieving significant increases in the financial incomes that would raise the purchasing power of the Iraqi individual, was a major point. Uh, the two draft economic uh, reform law, natural resources, investment law, 
constitutes Iraq's next strategy to generate investment partnerships with the private sector, according to a wide production a production chain that goes beyond just the extraction and export paragraphs so that the extraction outputs go to the manufacturer of the raw materials. And what does it do? It uh, goes directly towards themselves as inputs, which are chains that will undoubtedly generate added value and predominantly uh, towards them, okay? That's pretty, it's heavy stuff. And you can get all this in Patreon, in our forum, and uh, in our Discord chat room. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Faoud Hussein, he, he's, he's still here in America. I think he arrived uh, Wednesday last week, and today is Wednesday. Uh, but again, he's still there, and they're doing comprehensive um, meetings. But in this article, it says America sounds... Now, America avoids talking about sanctions against Iraqi banks. It says that uh, we had a frank meeting with the U.S. Treasury, and they are not talking about sanctions on Iraqi banks. But rather, they are talking about taking some measures and reforming the banking system in Iraq. And noting that the delegation accompanying the prime minister, they will talk about this aspect possibly in the future. But they're not. They're not doing it at this stage. They're, that's basically what they're coming at. He points out before the arrival of the Iraqi prime minister, which he's coming uh, to United States, uh, Washington, April 15th, it sounds like, there will be various committees to discuss energy issues, which include oil, gas, and electricity. Uh, there's going to be committees on financial and banking issues, committees on how to provide services in the field of transportation, and committee in the field of higher education, as well as health. So they're going for what the citizens need. They're trying to work this out in a manner that is helpful for the country. And in the end of the day, it's to uh, provide for the citizens. Uh, the foreign minister comes in and says, these committees will meet with America, uh, which will be led by the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, We'll see that he was there. Uh, this is from yesterday. We'll see that there's more um, tonight that he is there today. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is noting that preparations for the Prime Minister's meeting on all these topics that I just mentioned will be relevant uh, coming up when the Prime Minister meets in Washington on or around uh, the 15th. They say the 15th. They say the 15th, um, and I saw taken for what they're what they say. Uh, parliamentary finance budget table arrives before the Eid holiday. That's another article that we have. This came out yesterday. Really quickly, the 2024 budget schedules have not yet arrived from the government, even though we are in the month of March, and they were supposed to be there and, and sent be, by the end of last year, but they didn't. And they're telling us now that the Ministry of Finance has completed the proposed amendments to the budget. Uh, the Ministry of Planning has completed the investment budget, and now the tables are in the body of advisors, advisors of the Prime Minister's office and have been presented to the Prime Minister, expecting that the amendments of the 2024 budget will reach the House of Representatives before Eid al fitr And so you'll find that um, there's more on that topic. It says on March 13th, the Ministry of Finance announced the completion date, the completion data related to the 2024 budget schedules, the inclusions of tax, and sending them to the Council of Ministers. So the Ministry of Finance finished their job. The Council of Ministers apparently is, we're going to find that they finished their job, and the next step would be to go to the House of Representatives. And it sounds like the House of Representatives might be, uh, as of today, tomorrow, and or the next day, um, be on break of session, but when they come back, um, the thought process there is is that they are going to have the um, texts and the uh, schedules waiting for them. So exciting times, because uh, it's not likely that they're going to give the House of Representatives the real effective exchange rate without having uh, prepared for that, okay? Uh, Washington awaits Sudanese visit. Our relations with Iraq are comprehensive. Interesting word that they're using. They're using it as comprehensive, and this is today. Uh, the 
Minister uh, Faoud Hussein met on Tuesday with his U.S. counterpart, Anthony Blinken, in the U.S. Capitol in Washington. Statement by Blinken suggests that the United States of America was an ally of Iraq in the face of ISIS. We all know that. U.S. Secretary uh, Blinken basically states that his country is our country, it, uh, mine. Uh, he's looking forward to the visit of Iraqi Prime Minister Sudani um, and a, a meetup with uh, President Joe Biden, noting that the meeting of the Supreme Coordination Committee between the two countries is, quote, is an important part of the strategic framework agreement that guides the comprehensive relationship between Iraq and the United States. What are they talking about? It includes many issues, uh, things like water, energy, okay? All of these things that they're in talking about. Blinken stressed, noting that the relationship between the, between the two countries is not only long-term, but it's comprehensive through the issues that they cover. Further on down, uh, again, they're going to be meeting on the 15th. This comes at a time when Baghdad and Washington are holding talks at the level of a joint military committee in order to come up with the formulas to schedule the withdrawal of international coalition forces from Washington-led Iraq. So that interesting, what they, they, they mentioned that, and they put Washington-led Iraq. It just seems like it was, it's a statement that shows a little bit of control that the United States still has. Uh, whether that's true or not, we're going to find out. The talks are proceeding to request of Iraq to withdraw international coalition forces from its territory and tr transition of relations with the coalition countries. I think there's about 84 of them, including America, to the level of a bilateral partnership. So they're going to be doing that on a one-on-one -on -one basis with 84 countries. It's not just the United States, but... In the meantime, we all know that the United States of America has a significant um, leg in this game. Uh, the, there's news out that publishes the decisions of today's cabinet session. It's about, it's about four pages of information. Uh, Samson brought this in, and uh, again, the dynamo that she is, she makes sure that we uh, don't over... over overlook anything and uh i'm going to try to get to it really quickly because it's i'm not gonna, i'm only going to do a couple of bits and pieces and they're going to be bullet points so it publishes the decisions of today's cabinet session so these are the this is al sudani's cabinet session it says according to a statement the council of ministers approved the Eid al fitr holiday starting from tuesday april 9th 2024 until saturday april 13th provided that the official working hours in all government institutions will resume on Sunday, April 14th. So April 14th, they'll be working. Council also voted, according to the statement, to consider March 31st and the 1st of 2024 of April as an official holiday for members of the Christian community on the occasion of their celebration of the resurrection. Very kind of you. So that's a good thing. Um... Let's go. They go, jump down. This is this is all about these decisions. There's four pages of decisions, and I'm only talking about some of the things that I think that you, as an investor, should know. Uh, it says the statement added that in the field of developing electro electrical interconnection with neighboring countries, based on the federal general budget law number 13th of 2023, so that they made a decision on that uh, for interconnection with. Uh, the Gulf region. It's not what it says in this paragraph, but I know that's what had happened. Uh, and in, the instructions for implementing, this is a kicker, in, instructions for implementing the budget law for the fiscal 23, 24, and 25 budget. That's big. Instructions for implementing the budget for that. Why did they do that now? Well, because it's necessary. Why? Because it's part of the investment project and the development project. You're going to find out that there's they, for have allocations and disbursements, you're going to need to have that set. And if those instructions have been placed like they said they are, that's just one step closer to what we're looking for, you guys. It's that big, in my view. The Council of Ministers approved the recommendation of the Sovereign Guarantees Committee. Sovereign Guarantees is big because what? You invest your money, you're going to get some guarantees. 
Uh, that was back held on March 9th. We knew about that. The recommendation of the Ministerial Council for Energy 24022 for the year of 2024 regarding the electrical interconnection between the government of the Republic of Iraq and the electric electrical interconnection authority of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries according to the following. And they give four steps. I'm not going to get into those four steps, but basically what are they doing? They're interconnecting the country with electricity. Iraq's going to need 24-7 electricity and internet for these systems to work. The ISCADA system is going to need electricity for the revenue streams coming through the borders. And they have effectively, looks like approved, to make sure that that is going to be sorted. It goes here, though, the, elect the electricity sector, on a different note, statement continues that in order to follow up on the reestablishment of electrical stations, the Council of Ministers to agreed to authorize the Ministry of Electricity to sign an additional letter of intent between the Ministry of Electricity and the international company, an international company, GE Vernova, to implement the projects included within the ministry's plan. Okay, so GE Vernova, Sustainable and Renewable Energy Solutions, GE Vernova. Okay, who is GE Vernova? We'll get into that. Well, I did some research. First thing is like, I didn't know. So I went and looked and said, well, who's GE Vernova? Bingo, GE, a United States company. United States company has, GE has a spinoff called GE Vernova. Interestingly enough, GE Vernova is a spinoff that got started. And so anybody that was a shareholder of GE is to get shares or a share at least one for one or whatever the ratio is. You guys will have to look that up um, or I might have it here um, into this new company. So this new company of GE which is a sustainable renewable energy <laughs> company in Iraq. And they did this, they ended the, 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 uh, the offer on the 19th of this month. And now on April 2nd, this company, GE uh, Vernova, is going to go live on the New York Stock Exchange. So everybody that owns a GE shares are going to get shares in this company that's going to do business in Iraq. Think of the exposure that's going to be. That's where the money is. Remember the World Bank bought into a cement company? Their IFC bought into the cement company? For what? Rebuilding reconstruction. Here, these guys are doing energy, electricity. <laughs> you can't make it up. It's, it's, it's huge, you guys. Um, and think about that. Look it up. Yeah, you can Google this. GE Vernova is a, pu a public company. And here's, here's my snippet. GE will spin off GE Vernova on April 2nd, which will then start trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker GEV. Holders of GE Common Stock will, will receive one share of GE Vernova Common Stock for every four shares of GE Common Stock held as of March 19th, March 6th, 2024. So they're going to get a one for four. For, sorry, just didn't know that. But there you have it. It's in writing. I would look it up. Too late to get it, unless, of course, you guys out there own GE stock. You're going to just like, what? I get that for free, and it's going to be exposed to uh, one of the world's most prevalent um, or major projects in the world, which is the Development Road Project, and GE is going to be in there. Oh, and by the way, did I mention? No, I didn't yet. Uh, the statement continues in, in a different manner. The field of optimal investment of oil wealth and associated gas the Council of Ministers agreed today to authorize the Ministry of Oil to sign a memorandum of understanding of a tr strategic cooperation with American company Honeywell to invest in gas and reduce flaring to a minimum and to benefit from engineering expertise in the field of developing refineries, glass, excuse me, gas exploitation and petrochemicals. So optimally in the field of training and development and engineering and technical personnel, they take into consideration that the implementation of this memorandum of understanding uh, does not entail any financial or legal obligations for the Ministry of Oil. So it's all on our American com companies. 
It's unbelievable cool stuff. And the, the next thing is they're going to increase monies for water. What do they need to run the country is they need electricity and water. So I would highly suggest that everybody that hasn't had a chance to do that, uh, come into our Patreon room, look up, uh, publishes the decisions of today's cabinet session and you'll be able to see exactly what I just told you. It's, uh, it's really cool stuff. The government parliamentary agreement to support the budget, revenues, and government allocations for investment projects. So the Strategic Planning and Federal Parliamentary Service Committee uh, ended its joint meeting today with the Minister of Finance, Tafe Sammy. You know, she was doing inspections on real estate with the Raffidane Bank and the Reconstruction Bank in, in England. Um, she comes back and she hits the ground running. Uh, so today, by discussing the ministry's plan to implement the government program, which we know Al Sadani has been hammering home, to support the diversification of general budget revenues and implement projects, and to facilitate the release of government allocations in the investment and development budget of the regions. So what are they talking about? Here we go. It sure looks like they're finally gearing to go live with the 2023, 2024, 2025 budget. They're talking release of the allocations while implementing the government program. To me, this is big. Tay Sammy just got home from the UK, as I just mentioned. Uh, hard work back at it. Release allocations for the investment and development budgets for the regions. Uh, we haven't seen them pay the salaries out of the budget yet, have we? But we're going to. I'm pretty sure we are. Uh, parliamentary committee, noticeable change in the exchange rate in the local markets. Uh, brief snippet. Al Kavajai, he says that this is due to the great cooperation by the government in supporting the private sector and all investment, real estate and economic sectors. Uh, the Prime Minister Muhammad uh, Saleh announced that the decline in the effects of the parallel market and the decline in its activity, while he indicated that this is a tangible success in the cohesion of the country's economic policies in three aspects, financial, monetary and commercial. This, and he goes to say that uh, the state of superiority of the official exchange rate in financing trade is, the, is why. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs caused, uh, of Iraq caused a decline in the effects of the parallel market and a decline in its illegal activities. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Iraq caused a decline in the effects of the parallel market and a decline in the illegal activities. And we already told you that they dropped that down to a mere 25 million. They increased the real legal trade from 50 million a day to 200 a day. Obviously, they've had a success in curbing the illegal market. It's truly a good sign uh, for the next move. Uh, what do we need? A real effective exchange rate will probably put the parallel market to rest uh, as we know it for good. And he says, uh, Another one that we talked about comprehensive, we, saw, we talked about Faoud Hussein and Blinken talking about those meetings that are going on in Washington today were comprehensive. This is another one of those things where they use similarity words, but I like to find those buzzwords and kind of blend them and say, well, are they related? Well, they sure are because what Blinken is in the United States, no, yes, but uh, Faoud Hussein is in doing the comprehensive meetings in the United States while Tafe Sammy was just in the United Kingdom, but now she's home talking about all these things and she's using some of the same language. They're basically two leaders for Al Sudani doing what? Setting the stage for what is being done and what needs to be done prior to his arrival into the United States on or around the 15th. It says um, Tafe Sammy, she was at the block headquarters in the House of Representatives. Um, the discussion dealt with possible methods and strategies to achieve the stability of the dollar exchange rate, taking into account the effects on the national economy and the purchasing power of the citizens. So that's twice now in two days that they're focused in on the purchasing power of the citizens. What's more comprehensive than that? For their part, the two parties discussed the strategy of the economic plans drawn up for the coming years, emphasizing they are comprehensive and capable of facing existing and emerging economic challenges. Well, if you have a comprehensive exchange rate <laughs> or something that's powerful, you will be able to uh, face those existing uh, and emerging economic challenges. So uh, purchasing power to the citizens, 
uh, working to achieve financial stability. You know, they meet in Washington and they're having comprehensive meetings. So basically, w where are we? They're emphasizing that they're facing existing emerging economic challenges and they can fix it. So um, that's my view on it. And let's see here. The Kurdistan government announces the launch of salary tax cuts and puts Baghdad in front of the responsibility. Bottom line, quick sentence or two. It says the cabinet, we decided the cabinet meeting to distribute the salaries for the month of February, and we directed the Ministry of Finance in this matter, in addition to preparing to provide the salaries for the current month of March and the rest of the coming months. So we placed the federal government under a moral responsibility to fulfill the promises it made to the provide salaries, stressing we have fulfilled our obligations and we hope that this will become a new stage for distrib distributing salaries on time. That's from Barzani. So bottom line, it looks like the Kurds are, are ready to, uh, or did, we'll see, uh, appropriate the right information to get those salaries distributed. And here we are at a time where um, they're coming down to that wire. And so the parliamentary finance today is saying the goal of appro approving the tripartite budget is to give the government space to implement its program. Well, they've had a lot of space because this was supposed to be done back in June. <laughs> Well, it was passed in June, but they haven't quite dispersed all the allocations for the finance um, of investments in the projects, but that's what they're focusing in on. Uh, it says that this gentleman, um, Atwan Al Atwani, told the official agency of news that the finance committee hosted today the deputy minister and ministry of planning, Muhammad Tamim, indicating today's meeting was continuation of hosting the governors with the aim of overcoming the obstacles in the delay of uh, listing their projects. Um, he says that the aim of approving the tripartite budget is to give the government space to implement the program. Give them space, give us the rear, is what I said today, because it's fairly easy. Uh, well, it should be, because they have the uh, grounds to prove and support that they can make an adjustment to a real effective exchange rate and meet those economic challenges. That's what all this data is talking about. They're actually moving forward and get, gearing to get this done. And um, last but not least, the, fine, the, minis, uh, wait, the parliamentary finance ministry hosts the Ministry of Planning to end the crisis in dispersing government dues. So a representative is saying, Jamal Cougar is basically stating that the, um, he's confirming that it is the federal government's intention to release the salaries of the month in March to employees of the Kurdistan region by next week. I think we all know that next week starts in their country on Sunday, which is the 31st. Remember what we talked about? We had holidays. The Christian holiday is going to be on um, the 31st and the 1st. And interestingly enough, why I brought it up was the uh, GE uh, Vernova is going to hit the New York Stock Exchange um, the day after their holiday. Interesting. Doesn't mean that it's smoking gun, just observation. Fascinating, though. Those guys are getting free shares. It's unbelievable. Okay, Representative Jamal Cougar indicated that the meeting was dedicated to discussing the governance development budget. That's the 23, 24, 25 budget. That's where they're talking about. Is there a problem with dispersing the budget to the government? Governance? Well, they haven't done it yet, so maybe that's what he's talking about. There was a problem in the past, but guess what? We see more on that 23, 24, 25 budget, disbursements, allocations, and investment. Um, and here we are. Um, next week starts on the 31st. So let's see what the HOR has when they get back. They're supposed to be back in a couple of days uh, if they're going to be back and to be uh, voting on uh, what the finance ministry, the council of ministers put on their table uh, is the uh, real effective exchange rate in there. Uh, I would say that it, it should be exposed uh, potentially before that. But then again, we don't know when they're going to actually physically get it. And so we're only telling you what they're saying. So this next week looks really powerful. So man, a lot of information. Thanks for being with me, you guys. Um, I really appreciate all your support. It's a lot of hard work putting all this together. Um, hey, for what it's worth, patreon.com uh, with Militiaman and crew. 
uh, we welcome everybody. And we have our Discord chat room, which is phenomenal with many different people from all over the world. So come join us. And if you have um, the will and can, any small amount, we have Zelle, Venmo, and uh, PayPal to help keep this process going. Thank you so much. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated, as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.